Tekken 7 has been out for seven years now. What started out as a fairly low-key arcade release in May 2015 turned into the best-selling entry in the series yet, and one of the most, if not the most, successful competitive fighting game of this generation, still drawing in impressive numbers to this day. A Tekken 8 is all but assured at this point, so the question on everyone's mind is when. And beyond when, what will Tekken 8 be? On this channel, I've talked a lot about what I'd like to see from a gameplay perspective, but in this video, I'm going to focus purely on the story and character development. Krimpai, the TBS illustrator, and I have spent many hours researching and brainstorming ideas for a possible vision of the direction Tekken 8 could go down in. Tekken's setting and characters have always been this interesting mix of inspirations, with a clear love and appreciation for cinema. We approached the topic as if we were the devs trying to figure out how to make something new while still remaining true to its roots. And to be super clear, this is all just in the spirit of good fun. We're simply Tekken enthusiasts, and this video is an homage and love letter to a series that means a lot to us. What will likely be the focus of Tekken 8's storyline is the ongoing conflict between Jin Kazama and Kazuya Mishima. Kazuya has aged a bit, and like father, like son, he's beginning to look more like Heihachi. Silver streaks in his hair resembling Heihachi's iconic hairstyle, and a manly moustache for good measure. At the same time, a bit of a throwback to his Tekken 1 design are the long-fingered gloves, and of course, the iconic purple pimp suit from Tekken 5 and 6, which has been tailored for a more mature Kazuya. I always loved this evocative imagery from Tekken 2 and Tekken Tag Tournament, portraying Kazuya as this immensely powerful but lonely, isolated, and conflicted man. Literally at the top of the world, but still unable to move past his demons, both literal and figurative. Kazuya might have finally achieved his lifelong goal of killing Heihachi, but it probably hasn't given him the resolution or satisfaction he was looking for. This is even hinted at with his conflicted facial expressions at the end of the Tekken 7 story, when he kills Heihachi. Equally conflicted is Jin Kazama. It's an impossible task to make Jin look cooler than he already is, so we just decided to make some slight modifications to his established hoodie design. Perhaps to show that he's on the run from Kazuya, or maybe even hunting him down. In the same way that Kazuya now resembles Heihachi, Jin is now also looking more like Kazuya. One of his eyes permanently glows yellow, similar to Kazuya's red heterochromia, and one side of his face is carved with the devil markings. Similar to Kazuya, Jin has successfully fused with his devil alter ego, and I think it'd be really interesting from a gameplay perspective for Tekken to try a moveset switch character, where you have to choose between a more defensively inclined Jin and offensively inclined devil Jin, each separated by perhaps a stance animation. Story-wise, I think it'll also be interesting to explore how children often come to resemble their parents, even if they despise them. Both Kazuya and Jin are defined by their hatred for their father. It's the primary motivator for their actions, and the fuel for the ongoing cycle of violence within the Mishima family. All culminating in a bloody, emotional, final battle between Kazuya and Jin. Think, Jin, think! How else are we gonna uphold our family traditions? Just think of your grandfather. Speaking of which... Heihachi Mishima is dead. Oh, um, no, he's very much still alive. Heihachi Mishima is dead. <laughs> oh, well, look at that. He's fine. Absolutely fine. In fact, Better than ever, look, that explosion didn't even phase him. He's tip top condition. Oh, look, this character is never going to die, okay? Never. 
So we think it'll be a fun and very Tekken idea to resurrect Heihachi's charred, mangled corpse as a cyborg, making him the king of literal iron fists. And look, this idea may sound stupid, but bear with me. Hachi is eight in Japanese. Jack has been named after every game he's been in since Tekken 5. Jack, Tekken 8, Jack, Hachi, Jack Hachi. The old man's being resurrected as part of the latest and final version of the Jack program, where they implant the brains of great fallen warriors into indestructible ironclad bodies. And bear with me, bear with me. Kuma is the one who came up with it. Mr. Chao Lan definitely does not find this whole situation very excellent. Also, I'm just a really, really big fan of robots with facial hair. Bless you, Unicron, destroyer of planets, disembodied head floating through space. On to arguably the most recognizable and iconic duo in the series, Law and Paul. I always thought it was kind of weird how Forrest was in literally just one game, Tekken 3, and then completely forgotten about afterwards, except for an appearance in Tag 2, which isn't even canon. I always enjoyed the friendly, laid-back, mentor-student relationship between Paul and Forrest, and I've always wanted to see it come back. Also, Bruce Lee tragically passed away at the very young age of 32. Clearly, a huge portion of Law's moveset is taken directly from Bruce Lee's films, so this fiery, energetic, upbeat interpretation of Jeet Kune Do matches a young man much better than Marshall, I think. For Forrest's clothes, we've taken inspiration from Bruce Lee's sense of fashion. He had a very particular and stylish way of dressing, which we'd love to see fully realized in Tekken. Paul's Tekken 7 design seems to have bizarrely been based on Mad Max. Tekken is full of movie references, so for this one, we looked at Kurt Russell in Big Trouble in Little China, which I think perfectly represents a more chilled, laid-back Paul in a mentorship role. As a callback to Tekken 4's more grounded, realistic designs, he's also putting his hair down again. Overall, I'd really love to see both Paul and Law be portrayed as less of this goofball duo. Speaking of dynamic duos, Horong and Steve were briefly shown to have a bit of a rivalry in the Tekken 5 opening, and then it was never mentioned again. Oddly enough, this was explored in much more detail in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. These are both cool, stylish characters whose personalities are both contrasting and complementary. You have Steve, the polite gentleman, and Horong, the badass biker. For some reason, I can see them both working as bouncers in Gunryu's nightclub. Yes, he has a nightclub now. No, don't ask. Fan fiction. I don't really have a reason for all this. Maybe I just want an excuse for Steven Horang to wear these dapper suits and get into wacky Miami Vice Statsky and Hutch style escapades. In any case, on to the next character, Steve's mum, Nina Williams. In Tekken 3, Nina and Anna were forced to become test subjects for cryogenic freezing experiments, and so were put into a cold sleep, meaning they stayed in their 20s despite the rest of the male cast aging up. I was frozen today! So, Nina during the time skip has aged disproportionately. Let's say the cryogenic freezing wore off or is having some side effects resulting in accelerated aging. Nina is a ruthless, hard-boiled assassin. So we feel she should have some battle scars to reflect that and also serve as a contrast to her natural beauty. Nina's costume is designed to be both practical and sensuous, taking a bit of inspiration from Anne Pariyo's iconic performance as La Femme Nikita. The garters in particular are a callback to the fantastic Tekken 2 intro. We've also tried to show this clash between Nina the killer and Nina as a woman through her blurred mascara which now runs down her face to resemble a sort of spidery Rorschach of battle makeup and black tears. Also, we might have been slightly influenced by the Batman. For her Player 2 look, we took inspiration from the yellow jumpsuit in Kill Bill, which of course is also an homage to Game of Death. 
Clearly, the bride was a massive influence for her costume in Tekken 7, so this was a natural step. Finally, on to Lars and Elisa. A lot of people point to these characters as the moment when Tekken jumped the shark, so to speak, in terms of character design. Essentially, that they're way too anime and that it skewed Tekken's delicate, multifaceted balance of inspirations towards nerd or otaku culture. I can kind of see where they're coming from, but I also think Lars and Elisa have a lot of latent potential as characters that hasn't been fully explored yet. Starting with Lars, I think him being the illegitimate bastard child of Heihachi, born to a Swedish mother, is a really cool idea. So I have no idea why this is his haircut and why he speaks Japanese even though he was raised in Sweden. I really hope they just go full Viking with this guy, give him a badass Norse Viking beard, make him speak Swedish, have his eyes tinge blue with lightning, and overall just make him metal as all hell. Though, Viking Lars is a pretty drastic transformation from Visual K Lars. There needs to be some sort of setup or reason for this, and I think something that Lars has always lacked as a character is a more personal, emotionally charged connection to his Mishima Kazama blood feud. I think Devil Jin should be responsible for either seriously damaging or outright destroying the original Elisa. Yes, original, we'll get to that later. Fan fiction, putting Lars on a crusade of both revenge and looking for a way to repair his lost love. So, on to Elisa. I think the idea of Dr. Bosconovich creating an android in the shape of his own deceased daughter is both tragic and beautiful. I'm surprised that this hasn't been explored more, a recurring theme in science fiction, particularly those centered around artificial intelligence, is if a person can be copied, who or what is the original? That's why I think it makes sense for Elisa to be mass produced. And this also ties in with Lars' motivation to bring back the original, perhaps hacking off bits from the mass produced Elisas to use for repairs, fan fiction. Also, I think this would give the devs more flexibility to really explore, without any restrictions, the most interesting part about Elisa from a gameplay perspective, which is the duality between her normal mode and destructive form. So usually Elisa is a very defensive, movement-oriented character who gracefully slides around the screen, similar to a figure skater, and this is represented in a lot of her moves. It seems this is a sentimental holdover from the original, original human Elisa that Dr. Bosconovich programmed into her. But when she needs to make a comeback, Elisa can bust out the chainsaws, which turns her into a terrifying lockdown machine. I'd really love to see this duality pushed even further, both in terms of gameplay and visuals. Maybe with Elisa's usually chirpy voice turning into a terrifying metallic growl when the chainsaws are out, and her eyes pulsing with a menacing red hue like the Terminator. Also, similar to Lars, please have her speak her native language, Russian, because Dragunov certainly isn't. Friends, thank you for watching. This project was something a bit different than what you might expect from this channel, but I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. A massive shout out to our incredibly talented artist, Krimpai, as well as 3D Bogey, who created that amazing 3D render of Jack Hachi. Please check the description for links to more of their work. And of course, thank you to our awesome patrons for supporting this channel. Up on our media library, we've uploaded the originals of all the designs shown in this video, both with backgrounds and as individual assets. Have an excellent day everyone, take care, and I'll catch you again real soon.